Hey friends, thanks so much for watching. Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today, I am going to be sharing with you eight of my top tips for virtual learning. In case you guys have not watched any of my videos before or you don't know a lot about me, my name is Meredith. And while I am a lifestyle YouTuber here on YouTube and I love making cleaning and homemaking videos, I also am a full-time music teacher in a public school. And so I wanted to make a video for you guys in case I could help you with any of those transitions and tips and tricks to get back to schooling, especially if you are homeschooling your kids or if you are having them in a virtual learning environment. But before we jump right into this, please make sure you hit the like button. And if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please make sure you do so before you go. And let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Okay, so I did ask you guys over on my Instagram if you guys had any questions that you wanted to ask me or anything specifically that you wanted me to talk about in this video. And so I I'm going to be saving all of those things to the end. The first part of this video, I'm gonna give you my top eight tips for a successful school year in the virtual environment. And then I'm gonna save all of those questions and advice until the end of the video. So we are going to jump right into my first tip and that is having some kind of daily schedule. So in your child's normal classroom during the normal school year, they always have their daily schedule posted somewhere in the classroom that usually breaks it down by what time they are doing each subject. And I think that this could be done in two ways. You could either break down your daily schedule based on what your child is doing in school that day, but you could also make the schedule a family schedule. Maybe include on there what time you have breakfast. Maybe include on there when you have dinner together as a family because I think that having a schedule like that for your kid will really kind of help them get back into a routine. We all know that kids thrive on consistency and routine, so definitely having that posted somewhere is going to be a big help. I also think that having a schedule posted can be so helpful for adults as well. I know that I thrive on routine and schedule as well. So definitely having that somewhere in the classroom, in your virtual classroom, that is going to really help your student to stay focused and stay on task. I would also consider on your schedule, putting it in colors, different colors for different things. You could do it based on subject. I would also include breaks, especially like our school has a built-in break throughout the day. I would put those on there and make those a different color. And if you are not doing a traditional public school setting and you are homeschooling, definitely make sure that you are building in breaks to your day. And it can be breaks where they go outside and they run around for a little bit, like recess time. It can be just brain breaks and movement breaks where they are just stepping away from their schooling and just having a moment to clear their mind and to refocus. And I think if you put those breaks on the schedule, then that really gives your students something to look forward to. It motivates them only 10 more minutes and then we're gonna take a break so definitely make sure you include those on your schedule. All right, tip number two is probably the most important one, and that is having a designated space in your home for your child to be focused while they are learning. So I would say that the number one thing that you can, or that you should avoid if you can avoid is having your child learning in their bedroom. I think that that can be a huge distraction if they are learning on their bed or if they are surrounded by toys and other distractions, they are going to be so tempted to play with those things and be distracted while they are supposed to be focusing on learning. So there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. The first way that you can do it is having your child set up in a room in your house that you are designating as your classroom. Now, not everyone has a room in their house that they are not using that they can turn into a classroom, and I totally get that. So my second suggestion, if you don't have a room that you can turn into a classroom, would be to use a common space like a living room or a kitchen table. And the reason I would suggest these is because setting up in a playroom or in a space where they're gonna have toys, again, a huge distraction. I would also really encourage that there be no pets in the room or anything else that can distract them. I know that I had a ton of students that during the spring wanted to show me their pets and stuff like that. And that can just be a big temptation during the school day. So having a space that kind of feels more like a traditional classroom is gonna be really helpful. And you don't need a separate room in your house if you don't have one. You just need to kind of create that calm and distraction-free environment for them to be able to learn. Tip number three is going to be to have all of those materials handy. And so this goes along with having a space for your child 
definitely make sure that you have some kind of caddy organizer or something with all of the school supplies that they are going to need. And my reason for this is because if you are a work from home parent and you are going to be doing your own thing during the day and you're going to be focusing on work while your child is learning, you definitely don't want your kid coming to bother you and asking you where the glue is and things like that. So always have the materials that are on your child's school supply list ready to go. Our school provided a school supply list and so I will leave down in the description box a link to some school supply lists if your school has not provided one for you. This just gives you a good place to start with what kinds of materials you should probably have on hand for your student. And as a music teacher, I'm also having my students have some things for music class that are ready to go and PE might do the same, art might do the same. So if your kid also has electives or resources that they do throughout the day, you may wanna have some supplies for those classes as well. Tip number four is having a designated time where you go over teacher communication and I would definitely encourage you to do this with your student. So there's always going to be a message from the teacher or some kind of information that's coming home and like I said if your child does music or art or PE you might be getting also multiple communications from multiple teachers. It's so important to have your student right there with you and go over some of those assignments that your teacher your child's teacher gave them. Also any other communications sometimes it might be things that they need for the next day so they may need a ruler and maybe you don't have one so they might be communicating things like that to you and it's so important that you go over it because your child is also going to have I'm sure lots of homework and things that they're going to be expected to get done and it's so much more complicated with everything being online that I think that having your student right there with you to go over it in the evening with you is the perfect thing to do. Tip number five is the seat in which your child sits in. And I know this sounds kind of funny, but posture is so important when learning. You can also provide your child some different seating options. I would say laying on a bed, probably not a good seating option but I have seen lots of teachers do different seating arrangements in their classrooms. Some allow students to sit on bean bags, some allow them to sit on those big exercise balls, some prefer a stool, some like a chair, really whatever is good for your child. But what you don't want them to do is to sit in a big office chair like what I'm sitting in and be slouching and unfocused. So definitely having a comfortable place for them to sit or even two or three different seating options throughout the day will just really help your child to stay focus and it gives them some choice so if they are getting really tired of sitting at the kitchen table and you have provided them with a second option then they know what places in the house or places in the room are okay to sit and they are less likely to get up and go to sit in their bed tip number six is creating some additional spaces in your virtual learning environment for your child to have a break and I know that in my music classroom, I always have a space in my room where I put my rug and some pillows and some books. And it's just a cool down zone, a space for kids to go and sit when they need to take a brain break or if they're getting frustrated and upset. There are also tons of tools online. If your school has not provided them for you, there are so many tools online for having your child de-escalate themselves and calm themselves down, lots of coping skills and things like that. I will link some great resources down below for you guys so you can go and check them out. But this kind of stuff is so helpful to have in a cool down zone because it eliminates the temptation for them to come and bother you throughout the day if they are upset or angry or frustrated with school. And a lot of teachers are really encouraging that students use these. They know that if they see a student missing from the screen that they have probably excused themselves to go to their brain break space. So having a room like this or a space like this in your virtual learning environment is a great way to calm down those kiddos who just need a little bit of a break. Tip number seven is to prepare lunch ahead of time. Most likely your child is probably not going to be buying lunch from a cafeteria since they are not going into the building. And so if you are not a parent who is used to packing lunch, you probably are gonna have to start getting used to packing them lunch. And so definitely prepare this the night before, have all of their lunch ready to go and have it ready in the same spot in the fridge if they know that they are supposed to go and grab it because you may be having lunch with your job at a different time than when your kid is having lunch at school. So we have a designated half hour school wide that kids are going to be eating lunch from 11 to 11.30. And if you don't have lunch in your job until around noon, you may not be there to assist your child in getting their lunch out of the refrigerator. So having a spot in the fridge where your kid can keep their lunchbox and it's already packed, ready to go, is a great way to have them go and grab it and be very independent. 
if you are able to make it so that you are working from home and your lunchtime is the same as your child's lunchtime and their school day, I would highly encourage you to use this opportunity to check in with your child throughout the day. Make sure that you have lunch together if you can. Ask them how their day is going. Make sure that they have everything that they need and really encourage your child to communicate with you. Mom, I need more paper. Dad, I need more paper. I need pencils. If they are missing any school supplies, really use that opportunity as a daily check-in to make sure that your kiddo has everything that they need. My last tip for you guys, and I think this is the most important, is to really make this school year so much about social emotional learning and not so much about the work. I know that here in Virginia, they are waving a ton of requirements we are probably not going to have certain testing and things like that because we really want to focus on what is important and that is the kids not the schoolwork and not the homework so I'm going to leave lots of links and lots of resources down below for you guys for social emotional learning we really want to make sure that these kids feel safe and loved and that they are kind of transitioning back into a school environment it has been for many of these kids a really long time since they have been in a traditional school setting and if you are still doing virtual learning Learning. It may be a while before you go back to school fully. We just want to make sure that these kids needs are taken care of and so definitely keep in mind that if you can include some of the social emotional learning into what you are doing as a parent that is just going to help further your child's education and really help them overall. So I'm going to leave lots of resources down below for you guys to check out that. All right, so now I'm gonna dive into some of your questions and some of the things that you had asked me in over on in my Instagram. And I wrote down a few of the things that you guys had asked me and I'm not able to answer all of the questions. You guys are so sweet and you have asked me so many questions, but I am a music teacher and so I am really not a expert in um, like general education. I can give some tips on some certain things, but you definitely want to go check out some different resources. There are tons of teacher YouTubers all over the internet that you guys can check out for some different advice, but I will do the best I can to help you guys with some of the questions that you had. So the first question that you guys asked me was about curriculum. Now, if you are homeschooling your child, then it's going to be your responsibility to kind of choose the curriculum that is best for your student. I'm not super knowledgeable in homeschool curriculums, but if you are keeping your kid in public school and you are virtual learning instead of homeschooling, I would definitely say to break down the day or break down the curriculum into chunks. And your public school is probably already going to be doing that anyway. But anytime you are teaching and anytime you are going through a curriculum, it definitely needs to be broken down in manageable chunks. The smaller the child is and the younger they are, the smaller the chunks need to be. So usually for kindergartners, I break things down into five minutes each. With older kids, my fifth graders, I can usually do a couple of different things. I can do 20 minutes on one thing and 20 minutes on another. It just really depends on the age of your child. So if your child is seemingly getting frustrated or especially if you are doing things in the evening, remember to always break it down into chunks. Keep it really, really simple. Another question that I got was about reading. And like I said, I'm not a general education teacher. I am a music teacher. So that is definitely where my expertise is. But if you are really looking to get your child interested in reading or you are needing some tips on reading, I would say the biggest thing that I always notice is that students who are getting read to at home or who read lots of books at home are so much more inclined to want to read in school and are wanting to pick up books on their own. So having a library at home, a bookshelf full of books just at your child's disposal is really going to help them interested in reading. Also, you reading to your child from a very young age is a great way to instill a love of reading in them. If you have older siblings who can read to younger siblings, that's a great way to do it as well. Just remember that you should always confer with your child's teacher for reading level and things like that. If they're not interested in reading or they're struggling, they may not be reading a book at home that is on their reading level. So definitely ask your child's teacher if the books that you are having them reading at home for fun match what they are reading in school and that they are staying on the same reading level. I also got some other questions. A lot of you said that you were not doing full virtual that your school district was doing a hybrid or you were actually sending your child back full-time maybe your school district gave you an option of whether you sent your child into school or whether you did virtual and some of you were saying that you had opted to do the sending them back to school thing and a few of you told me that you were kind of feeling like maybe you had made the wrong choice and I'm just gonna start by saying that everybody is in a completely different situation everyone lives in different states in the country and different places are dealing with COVID differently. What is good for somebody that lives in one area is not necessarily good for somebody that lives in another. 
And also, you know your child better than anybody else. If your child really thrives in a in-school setting and your school district gave you that option and you felt like that's what your child really needed to succeed, then I don't think that you made a bad decision. I think everybody needs to make the decision that is best for them. I think what's really important right now is that school districts are giving people choice. If people are not feeling comfortable going in, that they are being provided the choice not to. And if people want to send their kids back to school, that they are given that option as well. And that teachers are advocated for as well. If a teacher doesn't feel comfortable going into work, then they should be accommodated just like a teacher like me who really needs to get back into the classroom to have all of my resources available to me and to be able to be the best teacher that I can be. So I would say if you are a parent who is struggling with feeling guilty about sending your kid back to school, know that you are making the best decision for your child and that is really all that matters. I had some other questions that were talking about connecting with their peers and really having that face-to-face -face interaction with peers that they are not really getting virtually and is there any way that they can get more face-to-face -face time with their friends. So I know that the way that my county is doing it is that the teacher has to kind of set up that virtual classroom environment and then that's where the kids can really see each other. Kids cannot be through the public school, cannot really be on um, either like Google Meets or Zoom or things like that without a teacher present. So I would encourage you if your child is feeling like they are not getting enough of that face-to-face -face peer interaction when they are in their normal Google Meet or their Zoom classroom and they're not feeling like they're getting time to talk with their friends, I would reach out to parents and maybe set up something that is aside from the public school just because the way that a lot of counties have it set up is that a teacher has, has to be present in order for children to be in that room, in that virtual classroom together. So definitely reach out to some parents in your neighborhood or in your school district and say, hey, do you wanna get some of our kids together on a meet to play some games or to chat and things like that. I think that that is a great way to extend the school day if they are not normally getting their resource or their recess time when they get to play outside with each other and talk to one another, then you can provide that time for them. But definitely I encourage you to reach out to other parents because a lot of times the teachers are not going to be able to give you that time during the school day where kids can just kind of talk and hang out. But if your child is needing that more social interaction, then that is a great way to do it. And those were most of the questions that I had. Again, a lot of the questions and things that you guys were asking me about, I don't feel like is in my wheelhouse of expertise. I can definitely help you guys with general classroom management and things like that. So if you have any more questions about how to better set up your child for success for the school year, please leave questions down below and I will be happy to answer them in the comments. But that is gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that this helped you and I'm wishing all of you and your children the best success and the best start to the 2020-21 school year. Thank y'all and I will see you guys again very soon in a brand new video. Bye guys.